Like we started selling this product out of the trunk of our car. But don't be afraid to fail. Inventory management is about balance. Get the product out, that's number one. I've always preached sustainable growth. So we just started building community. Look at the data. Product development is everything. Yeah, we say we're a brick, click and pop. But you have to love what you do. Um, so customer enthusiast, presenter, golfer, and fantasy PC gamer. Uh, Taylor F. Clark has been with Clavio for two years now in um, uh, customer and growth success. And he has past experience with HubSpot and LogMain for 10 plus years. His excitement in email and SMS marketing lies in the fact that data is first to tell the story. And we know Clavio, they love their data and it's, it's really such a powerful tool, especially in e-commerce. So I'm going to stop the poll for now and we'll look at those results in a little bit. But uh, Taylor, I will pass it off to you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ivana. I just want to confirm everybody can hear me just fine. Yep. Great. Miranda, that was a really tough act to follow. So hopefully we do a, a decent job on SMS. And I'm really interested to hear the results of that poll. So what I'll do now is I'll share my screen and put this into present mode. And just let me know if for whatever reason this is looking um, it isn't displaying correctly, but um, first, thank you again. It's really an honor to be here. It's an honor always to speak with Shopify customers, Klaviyo customers, e-commerce businesses, small brands, big brands. So hopefully what we're going to get into today, especially given at least the early results of that poll, will allow uh, at least a lot of you to start to feel comfortable about what are some of the next steps to take in SMS marketing if it's on your strategy roadmap. And so today, we're going to talk about SMS marketing and then SMS marketing in Klaviyo. And the reason I make that distinction is that a lot of the concepts that we'll introduce today, strategies, deliverability, consent, are relatively universal. So if you're with a different SMS provider, this should still provide some value. It's not necessarily just how to use Klaviyo uh, for SMS marketing. Ideally, there's general best practices and general knowledge that we can take away. And so without further ado, uh, thank you very much for that intro, Ivana. That was great. My name is Taylor Clark. I'm a growth success manager here at Clavio. And you can always reach out to myself or the Clavio growth team on our social channels here, as well as find some really great content. It's just shorter content, snackable content, et cetera, on our YouTube channel. And today's agenda, you know, is really going to focus around this theme, actually, which, which Miranda was, was referring to really well about, you know, low cost and low barrier to entry. And so I kind of phrase this as SMS marketing is happening now and there's no barrier to entry. And, and what I mean by SMS marketing is happening now is that if you really look back in the history, it was probably in the late 2000s that some major brands like Nike, for example, really started with SMS campaigns. And we can all probably look back in our Android or iPhone right now and see a number of messages that we've received over the last couple of weeks, couple of months, that are promotional or sales-based SMS messages from brands that we've opted into. And I really wanna just highlight that while SMS marketing has been happening for a long time, it's really started to become a developed avenue or, or, or revenue generation stream in the last two or three years. And then even more so with Clavio, or I'm sorry, even more so with COVID, excuse me, I shouldn't associate those two, but even more so with COVID, uh, we're just seeing the success of SMS marketing start to really gain a foothold. And we're now viewing it as something that's not going away. It's no longer a fad. And I don't want to necessarily compare SMS marketing to say Facebook advertising, you know, which was a complete game changer in, in the way that you know, DTC and e-commerce brands worked and started to advertise. But SMS marketing is, is real. It's, gonna, it's here to stay. And so now is the time to start thinking about how or when to implement this into your marketing strategy. And from a barrier to entry standpoint, it's much simpler than email. Um, we'll get into a couple of the you know, legal differences around consent and deliverability. And then we'll move into how we actually implement it and how we would implement it within Clavio or just in general in your kind of strategy roadmap. And we'll, then we'll go into some kind of you know, fun best practices, do's and don'ts, and I'll make sure that there's at least a few or 10 minutes or so for any questions afterwards. But um, let's dig in here. So we're going to start with collecting SMS consent and SMS deliverability. And so I'm not necessarily going to read every piece of text on this. Feel free to screenshot this slide if it's helpful for later. But there's a few really important things about SMS that are different than email. 
And the first is SMS opt-in. So I like to start here with email. And so you think about email, you can collect email addresses at say a farmer's market at your brick and mortar location. And there can be no, there doesn't have to be necessarily an electric or digital timestamp around that email collection for you to then go and email that individual and say, hey, we met at the farmer's market, you know, check out our brand, we're having a great sale. That's totally acceptable. With SMS, you have to have a digital consent record that this individual has consented to opting in and receiving SMS messages. And we'll get to some of that wording and how Klaviyo automatically provides that language, which a lot of our competitors do as well, just to be clear. Uh, but that's one thing you really want to be careful about when you're considering SMS is do you actually have that explicit opt-in? To double down on it, even though it's not maybe the most fun part about this conversation, but let's say, for example, at checkout in Shopify, you collect a phone number for any number of reasons. If there's not, just because you've collected that phone number doesn't mean that that individual, even though they're making a purchase, has consented to receive SMS messaging from your brand. Now, Shopify and Klaviyo have just recently kind of fully flushed out that integration where you can add that opt-in language, but unless you have that explicit opt-in language in your actual Shopify store, in your Klaviyo form, in your type form form, whatever form you're using, you cannot email that or you cannot send an SMS message to that individual. Now, I will jump a few uh, rows down here. Klaviyo and most other SMS providers do provide kind of a check to make sure this is actually, uh, that SMS consent is, is digitally marked within Klaviyo. And so what I mean by that, if you've imported a list, let's say of a hundred customers and their phone number is part of that import, if they don't then have that digital SMS consent along with that, and you try and send an SMS message, Klaviyo will make sure that we've kind of got your back and we won't let those, just because there's a phone number being sent, also receive that SMS message, we can make that distinction within Klaviyo. Um, so that's just one of the main things to consider around SMS is just making sure that you're putting in that opt-in language, which we'll get to on the next slide. And then I do like to talk about deliverability. I've worked with Scott and Ivana before, and I, I think they both know if I was going to talk for two hours on a topic, it would probably be email deliverability because it's complex. It's difficult. There's way to, ways to manipulate the data. There's ways to completely fail and then completely succeed when it comes to email deliverability. That's not the case yet with SMS deliverability in that it's, it's much more simple. There's not yet a SMS sender reputation that you need to manage when you're sending your SMS messages. And the reason I'm kind of highlighting this is that um, as a number of our customers are looking to explore SMS as an opportunity, there's this concept of like, how long would it take to get set up? You know, how, when can I actually start sending these messages? And with email, there would be a relatively significant warming period if you were going to start a new email strategy tomorrow or the next day. You need to make sure that you got your open rates up, you got the right engagement levels. With SMS, there's no warming period. Now, there's definitely going to be some best practices that we want to follow, but there's not necessarily things yet that would say, hey, in the past or because of your last send that didn't do very well, your next send is going to do worse or better. So that's one thing I really like to highlight with SMS is that essentially when you're ready to go, you're ready to go. Once you have that consent and you have those mobile numbers in your, in your portal, you can go ahead and start sending SMS messaging. Um, I will mention there's a couple legal considerations. If you're going through the platform that you use, this is gonna be Klaviyo. I can mention a couple of competitors, SMS, Bump, Attentive, whatever it may be. This opt-in language that we provide is generally gonna get your back. But if there are any additional concerns, I'm not a lawyer. We do make sure to recommend, check with any legal team that you may have. But if you're just going about the general SMS process within Klaviyo, we should have your back on that. And to kind of get into that explicit opt-in language, um, there's a couple examples here on the slide. And one thing I'll mention is that this text in the bottom left is automatically added to any form that you create within Klaviyo, as long as there is a mobile number field. So you don't have to worry about getting this text correct, making sure you, you've copied and pasted it the correct way, you've hyperlinked it. It's going to be automatically inserted into any form where you're asking to collect SMS consent. Again, really making sure that we have your back as 
you know, maybe I won't assume anything, but the vast majority of everybody on this call aren't lawyers either. And so we want to make sure that we're providing that legal language correctly for you. And then one similarity to email is that you really need to have opt out language within your SMS messages. Now with email, this is a strong recommendation. With SMS, it's a non-starter. So what I mean by that is with email, if you don't have your opt out language, which I would think almost all of us do, it's just gonna hurt your deliverability or the chances that you go through to an inbox. If you don't have the opt out messaging, which will be automatically put into the message, AKA you'll create this portion of the text and then Clavio will automatically put in this portion of the text, you can actually have complaints filed against you. So really don't delete that. Clavio makes it very difficult to delete. We do allow for a little bit of editing when it comes to the text that you see here. So maybe it's something like, you know, text stop to stop receiving SMS messaging. But generally, I don't recommend, especially anybody getting started with SMS, to change the text that we automatically provide. As the way it's written, it will cover all the checkboxes to make sure that you're legally sending SMS messages to your subscribers. Now, if I was doing an, a presentation on email marketing, there would be another, or email deliverability, there'd be another 30 slides. I, I don't mean to oversimplify it, but one thing I like to point out with SMS uh, messaging is that open rates aren't really a thing. Almost all SMS campaigns that you send or if you insert them into automation, they're going to have a 98, 99% open rate because depending on the mobile settings of Android users or iOS users, almost all text messages need to be read to even delete them. So we're going to see extremely high open rates all the time. One thing you'll just wanna keep an eye on is your click-through rate and then your conversion rate. And we'll get into some of the things that we wanna test in just a few moments here. But once we've kind of understood that, we've understood like, hey, the, the SMS provider we're working with, in this case, Clavio, has got our back from legal terminology, providing the correct opt-out language. How do we actually start to then implement it? And so the first thing what I would recommend doing is just start collecting SMS consent now. You don't have to have your strategy built out for tomorrow, next week, three months from now. But when you do finally develop that strategy, it can be nice to have maybe, you know, 20, maybe a few hundred SMS numbers in your account already so that your first test, your first campaign, your first automation can actually have a relatively big impact because you've already had or you've already spent the time collecting SMS messaging. So that's one thing. Even if you're just exploring, feel free to take some of the advice and I'm about to go through these, but say, hey, you know what? We're just gonna start with collecting SMS consent for now. And this is a great kind of like V1 test of, are my subscribers or site visitors even interested in, re in, in receiving this? If you start to see like, hey, wow, our conversion rates have gone way down, maybe your audience isn't all that interested in SMS. So don't go invest, make that time investment of building out an SMS strategy. But in the meantime, you can start collecting SMS consent. And there's a few different ways that we'd recommend doing that. And the first is going to be the in the leftmost, if we're going left to right, I don't want this to be too confusing, but there's also a good opportunity to go right to left on this as well. But you can think about this potential customers as your main form, the pop-up form, the slide out form that everybody who visits your site sees at least the first time they visit your site. And so this is a great way to start. You're gonna hit the largest potential audience. And one thing I'll mention too here is actually, especially in this form, you can always make your SMS field optional if you don't want to potentially hurt that conversion rate. See like, hey, you know, are people still filling it out with this optional? Um, but this would be the first and kind of most um, inclusive way to collect SMS messaging is your general form. And by simply adding that cell phone field, which as I mentioned, will automatically put in another block with the correct SMS messaging. And one really great way to do this, and we get a lot of questions around this and they're great questions about like, well, you know, is adding another field, especially an invasive field, like your actual phone number, is that going to hurt my conversion rates? You know, I'm not going to lie. There's a chance that it does. The best way to test that yourself is to use Clavio's AB form testing tools to say, hey, you know what? We're going to show 70% of our customers our traditional form, you know, just to make sure it's safe, just to make sure we're still collecting email addresses. But, you know, we're going to show 30% of our visitors that that mobile number two. And so you can start to get a pretty good understanding of, you know, the overall conversion rate from a pre impressions to submissions to see if this is something that you want to continue doing. 
very low risk in terms of hurting conversion rates in a big way if you're doing it via A-B testing. And then the other two options on this are gonna be a little bit more exclusive. And so we're gonna see here if we don't necessarily wanna put the SMS field on our main form, can we instead only show it to existing email subscribers, for example? Or can we show it to only VIP customers or a very specific segment? So the way I would kind of look at this, and, and you would do that, I won't get too into Klaviyo form functionality, but under form behaviors, you can determine who you would show your form to. But you can either look at this as, I'm going all the way in and I'm going left to right on this screen, or I'm gonna start really small and only show my SMS consent message to our most engaged audiences, VIPs, any kind of segment that you may, uh, that you may think about. So this is how we would definitely recommend starting is just collecting SMS consent, see the success of that, and then determine, do we wanna start implementing this in some of our messaging? And if that is the case, we also recommend starting small with SMS by implementing it in automation. And what I mean by that is, instead of going out and saying, hey, we're gonna start a whole campaign strategy around SMS, you can just insert it into your existing Klaviyo flows. And we'd recommend doing this with the welcome series and the abandoned cart, because these are the two flows that have generally have the most traffic when it comes to email automation. So the way to do this is very simple in that you'd put in a conditional split of is not consented to receive SMS messaging. There's a little, a few double negatives on this, so bear with us, but we generally like to stick with the is not because then the yes path is your traditional email path. So you're not messing with what is already existing. And then if they do meet SMS consent, you can say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna send them an SMS message instead. It's a really good way to keep the volume down and the costs down, and we'll get to costs on kind of the last slide here, but that's a really good way to keep those, co those costs down is just by putting it into automation as opposed to a larger campaign send. And maybe pro tip here is if you do want it, the next level of A-B testing would be right here at this branch, you would then put in a 50-50 split so that 50% of individuals who have consented to SMS get an SMS message and 50% of individuals still get an email. And so that's a really clear cut way of saying, hey, is SMS with the specific flow that I've inserted, is it a better conversion rate than my email marketing? And is this something that maybe I should turn the dial up on? And then continuing with flows, um, one really great thing is like, so, you know, I maybe just showed one screenshot there and hopefully that's helpful, but maybe you're looking at your other flows and you're like, I don't know, where do I put this branching logic? You can go into our browse ideas section under flows and you can see a number of pre-built SMS flows there. You can either decide to build from this library or you can say, hey, you know what? All right, great. The logic consent all set up correctly in this. I'm just going to duplicate that into my existing flow. And so the message there is there's no need to start from scratch kind of see what some of the best practices are um, around SMS messaging and automation. And then once we've kind of done those things, so we're, we're, we're testing the waters a little bit with automation, we're testing the waters a little bit by collecting consent. Now would be like, hey, we, we've seen some traction, we've seen some sales from this. What do we do when it comes to the campaign? And we really want to think about SMS as a, as a complement to email. At the moment, we're not gonna suggest that you're sending more SMS campaigns than you are emailing campaigns. Really, it's about a third of the time. So if you send three emails a month, you'd maybe send one SMS campaign per month alongside that. And the goal of this is to really kind of hammer home a point or a sale or a new product or email. They can certainly linger. They can be much more creative. They can also be much more annoying. as We've all probably all experienced with spacing and font sizes. SMS is pretty clear cut in that you can't change the way that this SMS message looks. You know, the font's always gonna be the same. It's gonna render a certain way on iOS and a certain way on Android. And there's not a lot of design work that goes into it. So the goal would be if maybe you're sending a big sale, you say, hey, or like your newsletter, you're not necessarily gonna pair an SMS message with your newsletter or with an educational course, for example, going back to Thinkific. Instead, you're gonna pair an SMS message with a sale, with with an action that you want someone to take right away. Whereas email can kind of linger, you can read it at your, at the, the recipient can read it whenever they'd like to. SMS, we generally see they're either gonna act on it immediately or not at all. So if I'm following these steps, it's collect consent first and maybe hint, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is gonna be here before we know it. And so if we have a pretty good list of 
SMS subscribers, we can start to use that come Black Friday, Cyber Monday without having to warm that SMS list. So collect first, implement into flows second, and then start to send campaigns that are, or SMS campaigns that are pairing with your email marketing campaigns. And then finally here, just some kind of do's and don'ts or must do's and no buenos. Uh, the must do's, be sure to introduce yourself and not necessarily just as a brand, but with an image. We want that individual to open that message and be like, right, right, I know this brand, I have signed up recently. That's gonna make your messages much more successful. Um, make sure to use personalization tokens, very similar to email marketing there. And then one clear and correct call to action. I think I just went over this, but the concept of emails, you have a lot more room to work with. With SMS, short and sweet, it's definitely better. And then the no buenos, I think a lot of us can remember when email first started, there was exclamation points, caps, dollar signs, sales, all these things, and they worked because they stood out. Now they don't work and with actually they get probably marked to spam as an email. With SMS, we wanna take, the, the consumer has learned when they start to see things like excessive use of emojis, shorthand text, caps, they know this is more of a sales, you know, promotion type of, of text message. And it still can be, just don't make it all that intrusive. You know, a couple of lols here or there, a couple of emojis, great, but just use everything, um, you know, with a kind of like a grain of salt. Don't overuse certain things. So these are general best practices to either implement or avoid with SMS. And, you know, overall, the, the final thing I'll, I'll close with here is just a little bit of information about pricing within Klaviyo, going back to the concept that the barrier to entry is very low. For anybody starting out, feel free to um, either screenshot this or go to clavio.com. We'll make sure to indicate pricing here. But for anybody starting out, you're gonna live in this toll-free section. We're not gonna go and start to explore dedicated short codes. And long numbers are really more of a, oops, excuse me, uh, a little bit more of someone who's already tested SMS a little bit and wants to see if a long number is performing better than a toll-free number. But within Clavio, your first toll-free number is gonna be complimentary. We notice this is the better number to use for deliverability with the carriers that determine whether that message goes through or not. And then if you are more of an advanced user or you have the budget to afford you know, the, the vanity codes, you can certainly start to explore that option as well. But as you start to consider, definitely land on that toll-free number. And then finally, before we get into to questions and wrap up here, um, this is the cost of the plan. You can either reach out to us at Clavio, or you can do this within your own portal. And a couple things I'll mention here, just generally with Clavio, there's no long-term contracts. So you can always, I hope you don't, but you can always leave Clavio whenever you'd like. The same applies to our SMS messaging. So if you wanna try something out for a month and say, hey, this is working, I wanna try it out for another month, and then it stops working, you can always cancel that third month. And this is what I mean by very low barrier to entry. Uh, I know it's not my money I'm suggesting that you spend here, but either way, these are pretty inexpensive costs to try a new marketing channel. And ideally, it's not that difficult to implement either. The creative aspect behind it's very good and just kind of putting it into those existing flows is a relatively easy thing to do compared to implementing an entirely new email strategy, for example. Um, so with that, I hope I didn't go too long. You can always check us out on the social channels. You can see any upcoming live trainings that we have on our events. And if you have any questions that don't get answered, we have a whole team waiting behind growth at clavio.com. If you're interested in either A, just getting it set up, or you have any more questions around uh, setting up SMS marketing. So thank you all very much. And uh, if there, I, I do, I got one question that was submitted beforehand that I can certainly answer, but if there's any more, uh, and I can certainly take those from, from you as well. Awesome, Taylor. Thank you so much. I love what you said at the beginning when you said, you know, how many people actually have like unread messages in their phones. I bet if everybody in here right now looked at their phone, you're probably not going to have very many unread text messages. So the open right. rate is just, you know, what did you say? Like 90, 90%, 99%, whatever, whatever. So high that it's irrelevant to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, okay. We will uh, jump into some questions here. Just before we do, I'm going to share the results of the poll. So it was pretty, um, oh, pretty great. on the ball, about 70% want to, they don't use it right now, but they want to give it a try. Um, so big, big numbers. Some people, you know, they don't feel it's a good fit for their customer base, which is totally fine. And um, only 1% uses it regularly. 
There you, yeah. there you go. Um, okay, let's look at some questions. Uh, so Anik is asking um, how to ask for phone numbers through email. So they have email subscribers, but, but not their numbers. So can they email people and get their phone number somehow? Yeah, that's a great question. Probably one I put a sh I should have put into this presentation. So what you can actually do, you also have the opportunity to text to join or su to su suggest, excuse me, text to join. So you could send an email to you know, a, a responsibly sized list within Clavio and say, hey, we just rolled out our SMS marketing program. We're going to offer 5% off for everybody who signs up for SMS marketing or you know, any kind of offer that you'd like. Um, and you can just say text join to insert phone number and that individual who texts the word join to that phone number will automatically be added to your SMS subscriber list. Uh, so hopefully that's a relatively easy solution there and I, and I hopefully answered the question correctly. Cool, thanks. Um, so Eva has a question as well. Eva is asking what percentage of customers is agreeing to opt in in the USA? Yeah, I'll be honest with you, Eva, I don't have that number. Uh, I, yeah, I don't have that number, but I will say it's small at the moment. It's not gonna be, again, SMS, we never foresee SMS marketing to overtake email marketing or paid social marketing. Um, it's it's small, but the fact is we're gonna, it, it scales it scales effectively. So ideally it's small, but you're collecting and then you're scaling as you start to collect more. But um, I don't know that answer. I wish I did. It's a, that would be a really nice data point to have. Um, and we, we also have a question from Adam. This is a, a little bit of a longer one. So I hope I do sure. it justice here. But uh, he's saying from my research, um, this option to SMS at the end of a transaction is only available for Shopify Plus. What, what are other ways we can create opt-in opportunities? So he gives an example. Um, his customers opt in to marketing and leave both a phone number and email at his brick and mortar store. Does this also create an opt-in for SMS marketing so that he can send them SMS through Klaviyo? Uh, great question. So I, I think the first part of the question ties relatively nicely into uh, the first question that was asked in that, um, yeah, so it is only available in Shopify Plus at the moment. Uh, and that integration with Clavio is live and exists. So if you have Shopify Plus, you can put that language in. If not, we would go back to that concept of saying, hey, we don't quite have the ability to accept marketing, uh, to opt into SMS marketing at checkout, but you can then get that email address and say, hey, you know, I'm going to send a separate email to everybody who has recently subscribed and then say, hey, text to join. Normally, you, you have to offer some level of incentive for this. You know, this can be new product alerts, a discount, you know, uh, Scott's an expert on offers. So we probably have a lot more from Merchant Mastery that we could insert there. But um, that would be the first answer is that that is the only opportunity for at checkout. And you would have to go into then sending them an email uh, to opt in. And similarly with the brick and mortar question, actually. So you can, if on your brick and mortar sign up sheet, you print out something that at the bottom has that explicit opt in language, you should be okay. So enter in your phone number and check this box. You have that consent. And then when you upload that list to Clavio, you do have the opportunity to mark consent completed in that file upload. But if you don't have that printed out and you're not extremely explicit, unfortunately, please don't email those individuals, even if they told you face to face, like, hey, they could have a bad day three days later and decide to file a complaint. So what you would then do is go back to that option of sending them an email saying, hey, you signed up on our store. We're so excited. Can you also just text this message with join? We'll make sure to add you and give you that offer that we promised uh, we would give you. Yeah, I think the consent part is just, it, it's so important. I mean, an email and sure. SMS, of course, so you just want to make sure that you, you cover yourself just in case because you don't want to end up, end up in some lawsuit or on the news or you know, badgering no. people or something. Um, okay, so there's a question from Manali. Um, you want me to oh, take it? Okay, I'll just read it. Yeah. <laughs> so Manali is asking, um, how does Clavio SMS stand out compared to your peer competition? So she's saying that whenever I think of Clavio, I think of email marketing. So how does your yep. SMS service compare with others? 
Great question. I'll, admittedly, I'm not a sales rep, and we probably and there's a number that are definitely willing to get a little bit more in depth in this question. But I'll be honest with my answer. Our pricing has just changed. I believe we are still slightly more uh, expensive than our competitors over at Attentive, for example, and potentially SMS Bump. This is a very small, uh, but I will be upfront about that. We are slightly more expensive than at least those two competitors, to my knowledge. However, what the way that we sell it is that everything is in one place. If you're using Attentive for SMS marketing and Klaviyo for email marketing or Attentive and MailChimp, whatever the two are, and those aren't talking to each other, that additional effort to pull in analytics, the additional effort of trying to A-B test things like is SMS actually worth it compared to email marketing doesn't exist. So um, ease of use, we're going to win every single time when it comes to if you are already a Klaviyo customer, there might be some conversations around cost where we lose a few of those. Okay, well, I'm going to sneak in one more question really quick. Sure, I know we're sure. kind of over time, but because um, we get this question a lot, but Philippe is asking, when will it be available in the EU? So I know you, you guys are rolling it out. It's available in the States. I think you guys are rolling it out to Canada next month, but correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. But when when will it be available everywhere? That's a great question. And one that I, I, I'll give another honest answer there. Philippe, thank you for asking. We're so excited to actually be able to market this in the EU. It is like our next frontier. Um, but for the time being, I wouldn't look at the next two quarters as this being a fully developed. Uh, so basically end of 2021, I guess I could just round now. Um, probably not fully functional in the UK or EU, uh, EMEA, for the at least the next probably six to nine months. Uh, and hopefully I end up being corrected and our dev team works that out with the, the respective wireless carriers. But for the time being, uh, unfortunately, not an offering in EMEA quite yet. And Ivana, you are correct, though, very soon within Canada, but not uh, not within EMEA. And I mean, the nice thing is, you know, for the folks in the EU, though, you have there's so many resources right now that you can be so well, well versed on SMS that when it is, mm. does become available, you'll just be ready to hit the ground running. So, yeah, that's a great point. And a two second follow up to that is also if you have any uh, U.S. customers, even though you're in EMEA location, you can start at an even smaller cost of saying like, hey, you know, we're going to try this in the U.S. first, see if it works, see if we can start to learn anything from it. And then when it does become available in EMEA and in, in the EU, then you will at least not be starting from scratch. Exactly. Well, Taylor, thank you so much. That was very informative. I know I learn a lot every time <laughs> sure. from, uh, from anything Clavio does. So thank you so much for taking the time. And, um, you know, I know there's still some questions we didn't get to, but uh, we have we have one more speaker up ahead. So Taylor, if you did want to pop into the Q&A and answer the questions that are outstanding, sure. please feel free. But uh, otherwise, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here. Hey, thank you. I always learn a lot from Merchant Mastery as well. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, thanks a lot for having me. No problem. We'll talk to you soon. 